it's Ice Spice season. And Dunkin' is entering the charts with a new hit, the Ice Spice Munchkins drink. Frozen coffee blended with pumpkin munchkins topped with whipped cream and caramel drizzle. Yes, please. Pop into your local Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. Nothing ever cracks Eli up quite like his own poop jokes. I'll tell you what. (laughs) I wrote that. I was on a plane watching this movie and I wrote that joke and then giggled so hard. I cried with laughter to myself on a plane. (laughs) Giggled so hard. I shat. It was fun. It was was meta. (laughs) And if you could have seen the, the fear, the absolute terror in everyone's faces as on a flight to Omaha, I began to go, <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because when we said there couldn't possibly be more than a couple hundred of them, we were tragically mistaken. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. I am very happy to be back, and I love this movie. Wow. (laughs) What a great way to welcome you back, right? Yeah, this is welcome back sex for sure. Spooktacular in in the most platonic way. This is the spooktacular. Right. And of course, sitting in 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? They keep getting better. 437. You'd think there'd be no surprises, but then they just roll out shit like this. And <laughs> so legit, hope stays alive. Like with this movie, we were like messaging back and forth. Wow, is this the perfect fucking spectacular movie? This is the perfect yes, spectacular movie. So tell us, Heath, what is the perfect spectacular movie? We watched Kingdom Come. It's the story of Satan, the Prince of Darkness having an off day at work. And it's yeah. so <laughs> fucking funny. Seems like it. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the cheap, spectacular twist of it was hell the whole time of other horror movies, but you wish they followed the morality of your mentally ill aunt who thinks Antifa did January 6th, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this movie. <laughs> What's amazing is that the, the 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 movie actually multiplies the stupidity of it was hell the whole time by the stupidity of it was all a dream. Yeah. Like, right. It's like it's actually impressive in that sense. They won't even decide which it is of those really. It's so dumb. Not really. No. Yeah. They'll hedge their bets a bit. Not just that, but it also adds an or is it. I mean, not to spoil it, but you're, it adds no, an right, or is it. You're so right, it's, it does. Yeah. it's dumb to the third power. <laughs> Yeah, Satan's uh, the dad from the Walton family at the end is what we find yeah, out. It's right, so dumb. Right, yeah. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst. Satan's minions trying to vamp. Oh, you mean the little <laughs> yeah. demons? Yeah, the demon guys. <laughs> Spider monkeys, yeah. The bone wing demon. So a couple times, Satan's doing a big thing. He's giving like a big speech and his minion has to just stop what he was doing, which was like attacking people and just kind of stand in the background. He doesn't know what to do. He lands on like modern dance. Yes. In, and crouch. It's so weird. They're in a crouch too. It's it's fine. I laughed a lot. Right. They're walking on all fours the whole time. They're just like, I'm a tiger. I'm a tiger. Right. Because here's the thing. <laughs> Spider monkey, de- bone wing demon with a blindfold on. Very scary when it pops out at you from the dark. 22 minutes into a conversation where it's sitting crisscross applesauce, <laughs> fucking <laughs> picking at the blindfold just in case. Mm, not so terrifying anymore. No, no it kind of loses a little something there. Just asking people how to how to pair Bluetooth headphones. I'm going to listen to a podcast. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. So I, I was torn on this one. So I kind of cheated and I put two in my notes. So I have best worst pretending to try to break things that would clearly break if you really tried to do that. Right. There's a ton of that in this movie. <laughs> you talking about the wood over the windows? Yes. Yeah. The over Amazing. and over again. Or they're trying, they're trying to push through something that you're like, well, obviously you could just pick that up. It's not very heavy. You move it. Yeah. But I also I have an honorable mention here. Best worst 
Christians trying out the word fuck for the first time. Oh God, it's the fucking <laughs> so best. It is it is so clear in this movie that some Christians were like, well, you know, in horror movies, we're gonna have to be willing to use some very profane language and maybe even show like women's breasts. We have to like, cause that's what horror movies do. If you want to really reach that horror movie audience, you have to be able to say fudge, but for real though, but actually say, but it. the bad one, it's the best. And the, the <laughs> actors, it's like, <laughs> it's like a five-year-old was given on their birthday, the right to say fuck once by mom and dad. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they come exactly. out and they're like, yes. fuck, <laughs> big smile. <laughs> right. And so as a result, on a regular basis, Satan, the prince yep. of darkness, source of all evil, will be like, fucking balls. <laughs> 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 kind of wrecks his gravitas. It can really I say? does. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to go with best worst sins. <laughs> so I, I spoiled it already. Everybody in this movie is in hell for something bad they did. But let me tell you the wide fucking range of Here's sins that, that these... <laughs> pretty broad spectrum, yes. Pretty broad. I was expecting one of the characters to be like, and I knew it was no parking before six, but I thought <laughs> yeah. I was just going to run in for a minute. They really needed to tighten up the range of sins to have the movie make any fucking sense, and they yeah. did not yeah, do that. For sure. I would argue that there is a sin that is punished by demon death that is less harmful to others than parking in a spot before yep. you're allowed to park in it. No, in fact, fact it's a definite is. you should go to heaven if there was an ethical God <laughs> thing. There's a, there's at least two of them you might be talking about. So yeah, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, th this one is pretty scary. So we're going to give you guys a minute to grab your flashlight and sink a little further into your protective blankie. But we'll be back in a flash with all the heavy handed moralizing that is Kingdom Come. Nice triple score. Hey, you like what you doing? Yeah, is that a video game? <laughs> video game. This is my new language learning app. Right now, I'm matching all the words for colors with all the words for Wolverine. H how does that help you learn a language? Can't imagine. It would oh, but if I don't do it, this cartoon owl will kill himself. So I gotta play every day. Uh, look, Eli, if you want to learn a new language, why don't you just try Babbel? What's Babbel? Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are a little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Plus, Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. It's true. Anna started using Babbel when they became a sponsor, and she loves it for everything from brushing up on her French to learning some Swedish for our recent trip. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse Babbel. And here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash awful. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash awful. That's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash awful. Rules and restrictions may apply. All right, guys. Thanks. Well, I got to get back to this. Wait, I th thought you were going to use Babel. Oh, I am. But that owl's already on a stool with a rope around his neck. So. No, yep. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Sure. Um, hello, uh, God? Yes, Lucifer. What is it? Wait, I, I'm sorry. Why don't you sound like Trump? We felt like it might be a bit of a reach across the brands. All uh, right, yeah, no, that makes sense. Anyways, what's up? So you're, you're never going to believe this, but I managed to wrangle like a, like a whole bunch of hellbound souls, and I was wondering if I could sort of... Oh, God, what's it called? Like, yeah, do I, I, I chase around and spook them? Sorry, a chase around and spook them? Yeah. Right, like so, so I'll do an amnesia thing, and then I'll grab a couple of demons, and then I'll just kind of, yeah, chase them around. What? Wh why? I don't know. It's a. It could be like a test, like a test thing. We love that. Wait, so they're not even all going to hell? Well, I mean, they all could go to hell. They all did bad stuff: murder, rape, dr drug use. I'm sorry, did you say drug use? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a pretty widespread 
of sinners. But uh, what do you say? What do you say? Oh, fine. (laughs) Nice. I'm going to tell the bone-winged demons. They're going to be pumped. What did he say? I said I'd tell you when the meeting was over. So we kept Sarah. Well, you got to keep Sarah. Sure. And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on a 13-plus Amazon rating for, quote, nudity, violence, frightening scenes, substance use, alcohol use, smoking, foul language, and sexual content. And I wrote in my notes, man, I love the spooktacular, right? Fuck we yeah, need baby. Nudity and substance use. So, yeah, we're listening to a car accident, right? We're listening to a car start up with a fucking radio from the 80s. It's going much too fast. And then we hear a car crash and then the like the credits are rolling through all of this right yeah i made a joke in my notes i was like hey look it's zero seconds into the movie car crash and then i searched within our google docs zero seconds into the movie car crash and had <laughs> eight <laughs> results it really yep. bummed me out yep. that's yeah no shit but yeah they couldn't afford to actually show us this car crash or anything so this is all done with audio <laughs> And like and, broken glass. Yeah. It's- and CGI buddy who had learned to do one thing, which was glass stuff. Yeah. And the movie was like, yeah, do glass stuff. Whatever that is, fine. Everything will shatter. Yeah, so we get that. And there's just like some random creepiness images underneath the breaking glass as though we're on Willy Wonka's boat or some shit. Yeah. And then we get our main character, Sam, waking up on the floor of a derelict. Uh, well, it's going to turn out to be a, a, a fucking hospital again. It's right? going to be hell. But he's like, fuck, I'm in a bad movie. This copying saw again. I think the, oh, this keeps happening. <laughs> yeah. This is derivative. <laughs> so he grabs a pipe to use as a weapon like you do. And he sees this dude in a blue suit dripping blood going like whispering ominously to him or something. Does that ever come back? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, that guy actually does connect in the movie. So the guy with the lead pipe is like, hey, whispery guy, what? what is this? But that means whispery guy had to just like stand there in that hallway for a while sure. just waiting to do a little bit of vague whispery stuff. Right, because he wakes up like the guy had yeah. just been sitting there going like, man, that guy's been out for a while. <laughs> <sighs> he stirs in his sleep. He's like, all right. All right, whisper, whisper, whisper. Then he just rolls over and he's like, fuck, okay. I'm going to write him a post-it note. I'm going to take off. <laughs> so <laughs> the post-it note just says, whisper, whisper, whisper. <laughs> <laughs> so he runs to the end of the hallway, but whisper guy has disappeared. He looks back to where he came from and whisper guy's over there. So he runs back thinking that surely he'll have better luck this time. And that's when he runs into the female lead of the movie, Jessica. Cara Santa Maria. Cara Santa Maria, exactly, yeah. <laughs> And, and they're like, and he's like, hey, did you see uh, a dude in a blue suit dripping blood and whispering? And she's like, I can't see shit. And I'm like, yeah, neither can we, really, uh, given the way that the movie is shot. Yeah, it's really dark. He says that. He's like, it's really dark. I can't even tell how high up we are. And I was like, is that a big concern right now? Like, well, how how what would you know altitude that? Altitude like, are we at right now? You're in hell. You're obviously in it hell. It could be very well lit in that interior windowless room, and you still wouldn't know how high up you were. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? You think we got a decent, like, uh, penthouse type scenario? <laughs> and this is an issue I have with all the It Was Hell the Whole Time horror movies. Look, hell is supposed to be eternal torment, not like some torment with some downtime while you figure out what's going on. Right, a lot more downtime than torment, yes. I'm just saying that the devil is underestimating how long I could stay confused for, all right? (laughs) I'm not getting eternal (laughs) torment. (laughs) I'd be tormented by idiots being like, what floor are we on, though? And a bunch of downtime. (laughs) Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That, That might be your hell specifically. So, okay, so, the, so they set out to explore the creepy abandoned hospital that I'm just slowly realizing this whole fucking movie is going to take place in now, right? They hear a noise and they go after it. There's a bit where, like, Jessica rolls up a newspaper because, you know, humor. Yeah. And w- what's the main character's name? I don't even remember the first guy. Sam. Sam. Right. Sam has the lead pipe, but it's like an actual pipe with a, a little t-joint at the top Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it looks like a croquet mallet and it's very silly it is very silly that's his weapon to fight satan yes exactly it'll be surprisingly effective 
against Satan's demons. We'll find out later. But first, we have to find this little girl, right? So they, they, they hear a noise. They pull this sheet off of a bed, and there's a little girl hiding under it. And all of us wrote in our notes, how the fuck did she wind up in hell? <laughs> fuck yeah, baby. Age reason, six years old. So excited to find out the evil backstory about this seven-year-old girl. But mm -hmm. sadly, we get something even dumber than what could have been a funny thing. No, yeah, I, I wrote in my notes. Turns out she's just Jewish. And then I went back into my notes later and wrote in all caps and italics, it's so much better. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, I want the whole movie to be just them finding new people who know nothing about what's going on. I, I have good news for you, Eli. Um, yeah, for yeah. real. Just a flashback of her <laughs> just having like a little sass moment with dad. Didn't honor thy father. There you go. Yeah, and mother, <laughs> boom. <laughs> also Jewish. So double. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Get in the abandoned hospital. Also, now, one thing I will say for this movie is that every time we introduce one of the 1,300 characters they're going to introduce to us, they have like a hello, my name is moment with them mm -hmm. right away. Makes it way easier on me. I didn't have to spend a lot of time on IMDb figuring out who the fuck people were. But this is Celia. Yeah. And she goes, will you take me with you? And and Jessica's like, sure. And Sam's like, I feel like you answered for both of us. Ah. You just... <laughs> Sam is way too slow. And Jessica's like, hey, man, you were way too slow just now. <laughs> were you planning to be like, good luck, little girl, fucking buy and walk with me somewhere else? So here's the thing. Celia's parents are probably looking for her, right? I mean, you know, they say <laughs> you're supposed to call in a you code stay Adam put. and yeah. then <laughs> describe what shoes she's wearing. So, and then Sam goes to walk out and a black guy hits him in the face with a board and he gets knocked unconscious. Mm -hmm. And while he's unconscious, he's going to, we're going to flash back to him drunk driving his girlfriend to death. Yeah. Which side note is his sin. Yep. Right. And look, drunk driving is bad. And if he was like, Ooh, I had 10 scotches and I'm going to go push my car into this other v car. I'd be like, okay, that's the sin of drunk driving. Except he just like drops a lighter and then lets up on the brake a little bit, which puts him in the intersection. Like, why make it a weird coincidence accident rather than just right? Shouldn't he be have like have been driving carelessly and drunkenly, not just like, oh shit, I didn't realize we were in neutral. No, right, not something that Eli does every four times he drives. <laughs> No, he just backs up two feet and another car smashes into them. So like, A, that's dumb and doesn't really get the sin thing going. Also, were they parked like two feet from the middle of a major highway? And then That's how it plays. Yeah. That parking job was horrible. Yes, a sin, but he probably did that sober. But then he comes to and suddenly there's just a fucking room full of new people we have to we have to get to know that they're, they're all like trying to pull the boards off the window. This is my best worst, right? Not, not trying very hard. Oh my God. It's amazing. So this African-American actor, he gets the rough treatment for so many reasons, but the first way he gets the rough treatment is that the entire direction they have chosen for his character is in a white hot rage. Yep. At all times over all things. Yes. Yeah. So everyone else is doing the like, I'm this person and this is probably my sin introduction. And he's just wandering around the room being like fucking walls. <laughs> yeah. He wants to fight everybody and hit things. And I'm like, wow, well, wish he wasn't the only African-American character in the entire fucking movie. Yeah. There is another character of uh, another person of color in the movie. That's Nadir. He's the one who's really racist and trying to start fights with Roger. The whole so time. openly <laughs> racist, right? He's he's marching in a different semicircle, just being like, I'll tell you the races I don't like in order. Number one. <laughs> Let me rank them for you. <laughs> Also, my name is Nadir. I feel like that's a not at all subtle thing about us being in hell, probably. <laughs> are we in a movie that's badly written? I feel like we are. Yeah. At this point, I wrote in my notes, my God, hell is Twitter. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Well, and I, so what I love about this, too, is that they keep trying to make Nadir and, and Roger fight, but there's no reason for it. Right. Like, so Roger's like, maybe we were drugged. And Nadir is like, that's ridiculous. I'm like, why would that be ridiculous? Right. Is it just because your two characters have to be in conflict? Yep. Yeah. And he's like, stop interrupting me. We had a fight earlier about interrupting that we're going to establish now. So weird. There's so many things to have conflict about here. And sure. They're just like interrupting is rude. 
rude. And and then Sam's like, oh, hey, does anybody have a cell phone? And everybody's like, cell phone, right. Cell phones, right, shit. Uh, Why did no one think of that until you said it? And they're like, oh, it's all dead. And we never established whether that means dead as in no signal or as in no battery, but they seem to make it seem like it's no signal, right? So I get to play Candy Crush in hell? Like hell is again saying it could be worse. Again, I'm confused. (laughs) I'm playing Candy Crush. Yeah. It's weird that Satan would let them still have their phones at all, but he like <laughs> he like took them out and drained the battery. He like watched videos for a while on each phone and then was like, okay, back into the pocket. There you go. Yeah, okay, I guess. There we go. Yeah. But no, but Sam does manage to get a signal for a second on somebody's Blackberry. This movie I believe was made in 2014. So he, he gets a message or he gets a signal through on the Blackberry, but then a demon screams at him and he throws the phone down as hard as he can and destroys it. So to be clear, Satan was like, hey, Beverly. And the spider monkey demon was like, Wah! and he was like, I got a fun prank we're going to do. You know how I <laughs> sabotaged all their phones? Well, yeah. So I'm going to let like one bar. And then when he picks up, you do like a rah at him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Team player. Love it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know when we're breaking for lunch. Again, we have to get this done, no, no, no. and then we'll all break it. Like we'll all break a lunch at the same time. Bah. I'm not having lunch now either. Bah. Then have a big <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> all right. So the various characters we meet: we, we meet Roger, the white hot rage black guy. We meet Nadir, the racist Middle Eastern guy. We meet Victoria, the obvious drug addict. We meet Charles, the obvious pedophile. And Rachel, whose uh, who sin appears to be having been molested when she was a kid mm-hmm. and still being sore about it. Yeah, not forgiving the person who molested her. Also, I would like to talk about the child molester. In this scene, what he does is wave to the child in the scary abandoned hospital and everyone simultaneously in the room is like, pedophile. that guy's a fucking pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> and they're right. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, they are. They are. Yeah. So, but, and then Victoria, the drug addict chick, is she's like, I need to go find a place to pee. And they're like, so do you want somebody to come with you since we're all been kidnapped and are in very obvious danger? And she's like, I don't need no man to protect me. Yeah. And then <laughs> Sam's like, yeah, I wasn't. It wasn't really a gendered comment. I was just thinking because of hell and demons. It was like anybody <laughs> that would go off alone. <laughs> Creepy ah, it's not the time. To, I, it's fine. Yep. It's fine. We're going to follow you. So she goes off to find a place to pee. And I'm like, look, when you're in a place like that, the one good thing about it is that everywhere is a place to pee. Thank you. This is exactly what I said in my notes. I said, I feel like when the bathroom is literally caked in blood or dirt, you just make a pee corner. You don't really need to wait for a stall to free up. Yep. Sure the fuck don't. Pee in the center of the floor and clean it up a little bit would be better. Yes. <laughs> right. But she finds it the most disgusting looking toilet that you've ever seen and then sits down on it. She doesn't even hover. I had to Mm-mm. stop the movie and gag. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hover there. You you can't even nest at this point. You would need no. like thousands of rolls to nest at this point. <laughs> yeah. No. Crazy billionaire remake of this movie. When the pop scare happens, there's just a loud shitting. nothing ever cracks he lay up quite like his own poop jokes i'll tell you what (laughs) i wrote that i was on a plane watching this movie and i wrote that joke and then giggled so hard i cried with laughter to myself on a plane (laughs) giggled so hard i shat it was fun it was was meta and if you could have seen the, the fear, the absolute terror in everyone's faces as on a flight to Omaha, I began to go. <laughs> 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 they all knew they were in hell right away. They did not need to explore that airplane hospital. They were right. <laughs> so, OK, so then she's she's sitting there taking her piss. And then all of a sudden, like a, a pool of either blood or liquid shit comes in i can't tell this all everything's shot in the fucking dark and she starts to say the actual line guys come on this isn't funny she doesn't even make it all the way through the line because she realizes it's fucking beneath her okay it would have been amazing if they had actually somehow run past her and started doing an evil puddle prank on her <laughs> being like, okay oh, guys 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 i got a great idea you got she got us we found where they were keeping all the blood and we cut a couple of bags open and then we slid them gently underneath the stall door to give you a little bit of a spook 
spectacular while you were taking a shit. <laughs> we have fun here in this abandoned hospital. Can't believe you sat down on that. Wow. So, <laughs> so she she comes out of the stall and she sees somebody sitting in the next stall doing some heroin. And the guy and the dude's like, "Do you want the rest of my heroin?" And she's like, "Well, don't mind if I do." <laughs> free heroin again? Hell has free heroin? Well, that's it. Yeah, that's the thing is that like, look, I'm not a heroin guy, but if ever there was a time for some heroin, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like I, do, I guess I'll give it a try. <laughs> I'm not a heroin guy in so far as no one's ever offered me heroin. I feel but, like yeah. the minute I get offered heroin, I'm a heroin guy. Ah, there's a needle involved, Eli. I don't think that you are. That's true. Do they have like a chewable? <laughs> yes, they, I guess they do. Yeah. Hey, only offer me chewable heroin at the Las Vegas live show. Right. <laughs> Shaped like a Flintstone vitamin. Yeah, <laughs> but not Dino. Dino tastes like bullshit. No, obviously stupid. So, so meanwhile, Charles and Roger are trying to break open a soda machine back with the gang. Sam notices his watch has stopped, as though this is all a dream and time's not actually moving. So fucking dumb. Mm -hmm. And then they hear Victoria scream in the distance and they're like, oh, I guess she did need a man to protect her after all, huh? Is it, yeah. Get it? Because she said on her way out. No. So they go to explore. They're like, Victoria, you, you taking a scream shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they leave Rachel and Celia, the, the, the kid, back in the room. Sam and Roger come in. They've got like a pipe and a board between them, but they make Jessica go in first because it's the ladies room. <laughs> Fine, we'll they go in the give girls' her a room. Fucking pipe. I didn't even think about that. That's definitely what they were doing. What if she's putting in a tampon? We don't know how much that hurts. Maybe that's just what they do every time. Nobody on this podcast knows how much it hurts. Nope, no, that's true. We so. can get listener feedback tomorrow. Like, oh yeah, no, we have to scream every time. We'd be like, we are so sorry. The Dead Sea Scrolls are real, and it super hurts to put a tampon up your butt. I get it. So it's. Geez. So Sam, yeah. So Sam just says he'll go in heroically and face the danger alone. And when he gets in there, he sees her bloody handprints. And then he's like, Ugh, and he leaves. And they're like, so what was in there? He's like, I'm not going to say. I'm just going to walk away all mysteriously or something. Why? I don't know. It makes no fucking sense. That, that's never explained in the movie why he's just like, I'd rather not talk about it. And they're like, all right, well, we, <laughs> we respect your privacy. Would you like to do the rest of the movie? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> So, okay, so we cut back to it. They're like, hey, you know, we just left Rachel and Celia, the two least, you know, like most helpless characters in the movie by themselves in the other room. And there's obviously some kind of bloody demon thing going on. So they run back there. We cut to Rachel. She's like smacking the cell phone, seeing if she can like whack it into submission. Yeah. Charles, who's hung behind, he's the pedophile character. He's sitting a little too close to Celia for comfort. Mm-hmm. And again, everyone in the movie is in complete and total agreement that he is a pedophile. They're right. There's just no reason for them to believe it at this point in the movie. Yes, exactly. Right. So far, all he's done is been kind to the frightened child. Yeah. I'm just a kindergarten teacher who's nice. <laughs> right. Could have been. What are you guys doing? So, yeah. So they, they make it back. And then just then they all hear like a fire extinguisher fall over. So they go to check it out all like, I bet there's a jump scare back here-ish. Right. Right, which means Satan, the Prince of Darkness, picked up a fire extinguisher, rolled it a little bit in a hallway next to them, and then ran away giggling, being like, this is going to be the best. This is going to be the best way to build this. Clearly. This right. is a good spooky. This is a good spook. Well, also, up to this point, like you've come across like seven different people. Every time you hear a noise, you go and you check it out, and it's just another person who's there going like, yeah, I don't know how the fuck I got here either. Right. Why would you assume that this time it's a thing you have to whack with a pipe? It's just it's another dude. This is a guy named Daniel. He also doesn't know why he's here. I'll point out later why he says this, but he makes it very clear that his name is Daniel Levine. Yes. And until they explain why that is later in the movie, I was like, is this guy's crime being Jewish? Because like the <laughs> fact that he <laughs> pulls the movie to a stop to be like Levine Schwartzbaum Hausenberger. <laughs> I have the little Israel profile picture yes. right now. Okay, we, we get it, man. So then Nadir and Roger fight some more because they're people of color or whatever. It's, Sam needs to interject some leadership to the point where I wrote in my notes, fucking white man's burden, am I right? <laughs> <sighs> it's so weird. He, he's, it was just like, let's have a physical fight now because we didn't write <laughs> anything else for the end of this scene. Yep. And then Sam's like, nope, don't. 
Okay, now we're done. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, Heath and I had a live show when there's a silence. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> just both start we're slapping punching. each other. We're kissing. We're punching. We're kissing. <laughs> <laughs> Noah's mad. So, so but just then. Got your nipple. Um, Nadir notices an incompletely boarded up window. Right. And so Roger looks outside. All they can see is a fog and there's like a silly monster growl in the distance. Yeah. Someone says, is that a dog? And I wrote my notes, probably a dog taking a screamy shit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how much it hurts for a dog to put in a tampon. So and then and they're like, we should crawl out that window. And Sam's like, hold on. Wait a second. And he takes a bottle and he holds it out the window and he drops it. And we don't hear a sound. And he's like, see, we're really high up. And then Roger's like, or there's grass or a gentle slope on the outside as we don't that it could also just be that oh uh, right also how is that helpful either way right also like you know just being high up doesn't make this an, an completely like non-viable exit right there could be a fire escape out there you know my plan wasn't to dive out the window <laughs> as soon as i pried the wood off right <laughs> okay catch me well, god just making sure yeah <laughs> so so, yeah, so Roger's going, I'm going to go out this damn window. And Sam's like, but I'm the main character, white man, and I said not to. So, of course, as soon as he reaches out the window to try to pry another board out, a monster bites his arm off camera. Trust us, it's very scary probably out there. <laughs> right, but, like, not hard, to be clear. Like, he pulls it back in, and he has, like, an Eli bite, and he's like, owie. And they're like, all right, well. Yeah, so apparently there's a, a flying... Owie level demon yes. stationed at that spot, just in case anybody tries to pry the window open. And, and he's who has been instructed to nibble them back in if they start to get out a window or yeah. something. That's definitely yeah. the new guy job at this hell scenario. For That's sure. exactly. Yeah. I was gonna say one of the demons brought a younger sibling and was like, rah, 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 and Satan was like, okay, fuck, fine. He can be outside the boarded up windows, <laughs> but he can't have crafty. Wow. Now we've established. That, that Jessica is a nurse, right? So she knows just what to do. She finds some clean bandages in this just disgusting abandoned hospital. Like, you know, I'm sure they've got a few sitting around there. And then she's like, hey, maybe we should all split up. And beyond like nine characters is too many to keep track of at once. They never offer a reason for this. <laughs> yeah, she might as well be like, look, there's nine of us right now. Let's get it down to a tidy two or three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone go off and... <laughs> Quite literally confront your inner demons. Yeah. It's so stupid. So yeah, so they ultimately, they decide that they're going to split into two groups. They're going to look for an exit and they're going to meet back there in 15 minutes. They will net, the fact that they were supposed to meet back in 15 minutes will never occur to anyone in the film. And their phones and watches don't work. So it is a completely <laughs> right. meaningless term. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, with two groups, the movie can now be twice as stupid, so we're going to take a break to prepare for that, but we'll be back in a flash with even more Kingdom Come. Guys, guys, it finally happened. Oh, no, the internet found your one-man production of The Wiz. What do we do? Oh, God, I'll start drafting a statement. Yeah. No, yeah. no, guys, guys, we got MeUndies as a sponsor. Oh, what's MeUndies? Me Undies has the softest and most breathable underwear and loungewear that I've ever experienced. Whether you're on the grind during the work week or posted up on the couch watching Christian movies, Me Undies is here to keep you comfy. But more importantly, when they sponsor your podcast, you've officially made it. It's true. Me Undies' signature tense micromodal fabric is as soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater. It's breathable, stretchy, and oh so comfy, making it ideal for all day wear. Plus, Me Undies' fabrics are light and breathable to help you regulate your body temperature so you stay cool and comfy. But have you actually tried them? I sure have. Me Undies sent us a set to try when they became a sponsor, and I'm never going back to old undies. I feel like I'm going commando in a cloud. All right, I'm definitely sold. Where can I get some? To get 25% off your first order plus free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash awful. That's MeUndies.com slash awful for 25% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. All right. So, so now that we've made it as podcasters, you guys want to um, you know, get canceled for a terrible opinion? Or we could just release the Wiz video, right? Okay, mm -hmm. I thought it was good. It was not good. Nope. <laughs> Dude, what was that thing? Yeah, I don't know, but something is seriously fucked up about this abandoned hospital. Tell me about it. I don't care for Mexicans. 
I'm, I'm sorry, what? What? Oh, it's that their music all sounds the same to me. Like they're I, always blasting it from a boombox, no, and it's off. I did, I'm like, I no, did. no, not that, not that. Why are you announcing your racism in the middle of an emergency? Yeah, dude, a demon dog just ate Carl. What? I was making conversation. Not even a little bit conversation. Nope, not what that nope. means. God. You know what I love is is driving drunk. Oh, what love the that. fuck is happening? Everybody, stop expositing their worst characteristics right now. Fine. Okay, fine. Seems like someone's worst characteristic is yelling at people. Thank you. Oh my God, I hope a demon dog eats both your faces. Mexican demon dog. Okay. <laughs> okay, a chihuahua demon dog is pretty funny. Oh, so good. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with group one. This is going to be Sam, Celia, Jessica, and Nadir. So they're walking down the hallway they come across this big pile of garbage and sam says i think we can tunnel through it let's tunnel through the giant pile of trash <laughs> why would you do that I why don't. hell's a side scroller we gotta go to the right i think we got it guys i've been trying to go against the back wall well, it's amazing is they're going to eventually run into characters that didn't climb through the garbage tunnel. So, like, we know later this is unnecessary. He just climbed. Yeah, through it's a- just a U-shaped hallway. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they climb through this, like, garbage tunnel one at a time. Sam's going to go first and then the little kid and then Jessica and then Nadir. And Nadir's like, I don't want to go last. And he's like, do you want to go first? And he's like, I'll go last. Dude, there's like four people. You, it's it's just a really, you got to, it's one of four. You're going to be yep. four, yep. three, two, or one. So Sam climbs through. Everything almost collapses, but then it changes its mind and he keeps going. Yeah. And he gets through and then they're like, all right, so who next in this clearly unstable tunnel? The kid, right? The kid? Child. Yeah, yeah obviously the child. So they send the kid through. Very weird how her like, white dress stays so bright and shiny this entire time despite crawling through garbage quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pin in that. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, right, right. Beautiful mind. Spoilers. Foreshadowing, yeah. So she gets through without a vent and now it's Jessica's turn. Right? So she starts to climb through. Meanwhile, Nadir, who's been left on his own, he hears a little boy creepily laughing his way through the shadows and he's like, well, I should probably go and okay. check that out. This is the best. Guys, there's a creepy child. I'm going to go get him. They hear him. There's a little boy laughing. I must go get him now. And they're like, dude, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> he could be laughing at a super funny black joke and I'm racist. So I'm going to go oh, check. No. Okay, and you know what? Sure. I'm good with him going. <laughs> sure, sure. So he, he chases the kid down. Meanwhile, Jessica gets about halfway through the tunnel when she notices a, a demon taking a nap inside the tunnel off to Look, one side we've all worked in restaurants we've all <laughs> taken a nap <laughs> under that low shelf in the walk-in Just freezer doing drugs and dry storage yeah, yeah exactly yep, yep, yep. <laughs> of demon this is entirely on jessica that demon is on its 15 <laughs> <laughs> this is such a weirdly low level obstacle from the great deceiver right including one demon who doesn't even like attack him no the demon's just there to be a little a little bit scary. She's in a tunnel. And this would be it'd be so easy for this demon to get her at this point, right? But he's just like, ah, look at these teeth. They're all kind of fucked up. So yeah, but so she scrambles out. We cut back to Nadir. He's still chasing pop scares around, which is fine. Fuck that racist. Yeah. I love to they're like, Nadir, Nadir. And they don't hear anything. They're like, well, I guess he's on his own. We will uh we will just move on. <laughs> so quickly. Like second only to trying to leave Celia behind. Sam is like, I mean, you heard me call his name twice. There's nothing right, on right, right, for it. Nadir, Nadir. His name is literally Rock Bottom. I think he's dying, right? <laughs> I <don't really> <laughs> so and okay, so then we check in on group two. Now this is Charles, Rachel, and Daniel. I wish they had done like a draft to the side on the teams for splitting up. Oh, like a some, volleyball thing. And then somebody has to get picked yeah. last and they're like, yeah. burr, burr, burr. <laughs> now, if you're paying a lot of attention and you're asking yourself, well, where the fuck is Roger? Roger has wandered off on his own. He's, he's done with all of these damn white people. He's going to go and find his own exit. Right. He's pretty mad because, you know, as the black guy, he was supposed to die first in the movie. So now it makes no sense. Right. Right. Don't worry. So, yeah, so we cut to Charles, Rachel, Daniel. Charles is trying to force an elevator open, but he's, like, trying to, like, open it from the middle, even though clearly this elevator doesn't open from the middle. 
Right. Right. It's one of the all slides to, in the same direction. So it doesn't make any fucking sense what he's doing. And while he's doing that, Daniel and Rachel are just standing back going, are you a pedophile character? Because you seem like a pedophile. You really have the glasses of a pedophile character. <laughs> also, just press the button on the elevator. I mean, try it, right? Just, just, you might as well. Yeah. So he's like, no, you guys don't know me. I'm not the, I'm not a pedophile. And then there's like this growly monster off in the distance. Just then, Rachel recognizes his tattoo, his mouse tattoo, and she realizes that he's the guy who molested her all, you know, way back when. So we're going to get a flashback later. He looks identical to when he molested her, but apparently what it took was the like off brand Mickey Mouse tattoo for yes. her to connect those two dots together. Clearly, yeah. Uh -huh. And so she's like, get away from you, you piece of shit. And she runs away. And Daniel doesn't follow her, right? He stays with the pedophile guy for a while. He's just like, yeah. what, was, what was that all about? He's like, women, am I right? Anyways, yeah. back to the elevator door. <laughs> right. Now, eventually he does follow her. Like, he waits for her to vanish in the distance. And then he's like, I should follow her now. I should I, go. I've lost sight of her. Bye. So now all of these characters are, are split up. Now we're going to check back in with Roger, right? He's still wandering around with his board, getting ready to whack somebody with it. When suddenly a naked woman rises up behind him. Oh, yeah. Boobs, baby. Yeah. We're going to get this movie's boobs. And in a like, so we're going to learn via flashback that this chick, the, the naked woman in front of him is someone he raped and murdered during his serial rape and murder spree. Sorry, no, I just wanted to clarify. I think my headphones are acting up slightly. Did you say one of the two characters of color in this movie is a serial rapist and murderer? Yes, I, that is exactly what okay, I said. Well, both well, I of them actually are sure. going to be murderers. Right. This was well, I didn't want to spoil it. Yeah, no, I, but yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh, dude. And for a movie that won't even show the blood on this man's bandage after Jessica wrapped his arms up, they show way more of the murder rape than I was prepared for. Yeah. We see three different murder rape victims. And look, I have to say this because what has very clearly happened is that the director was like, guys, we get to hire actresses and they're going to get their boobs out. So I want one of each kind of boobs because there's very clearly a normal boobs, big boobs, small boobs actress. <laughs> and you will totally never is. convince me that he cast people on anything other than that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He came to the green room afterwards and he was like, nice, you did it. You've seen all the kinds of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so but Roger's being surrounded now by naked women and they all like are trying to force him to cup their boobs, right? But he doesn't want to because they're scary boobs. Scary boobs. Yeah, but eventually they force his hand under their boob and it, it electrocutes him and then they turn to demons and eviscerate him. And Hey, can I say? Team demon here, right? Get him, ladies. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wrote in my notes, you were with me the whole time, demon lady. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, I hope my wife doesn't come up during this part. <laughs> yeah, so I was glad about the killing that guy, I guess. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here's the thing with this worldview. This guy could have gone to heaven if he loved Jesus at the last second. And like, yep. I, you can't make me forget that. That is the morality system, yeah. And in case you were in danger of forgetting that, we're going to see that happen in a minute. We will, yeah. The movie will do a, there's got to be a better way with a different person of color <laughs> yes. in a couple of scenes. So, okay, so meanwhile, Sam, Jessica, and Celia, they're still tooling about. And Sam has this amazing fucking moment where the writer just gave up, right? He's like, Sam's just like, the, the actual line is, is your head making a sense? That's what he <laughs> says to Jessica. Those fucking words. Yeah, he says, my head's not making sense. Is your head making sense? And she's like, yes. well, that's not an English sentence, so I have no, no idea. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Maybe. He's like, what I mean is that I keep reflecting on my sins of old. You? <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, now this is the, where we do a little foreshadowing for her. She's like, well, I remember one terrible sin when I was only 18 years old, and there was something in my uterus, and there was a, then there's an interruption, and we're going to fill that in later, you know? Right. So just to clarify for our audience, so far these deadly sins of the movie that have landed the characters in hell are 
serial rape and murder, mm -hmm. drug use, yep. and bodily autonomy. Two forms of bodily autonomy and murder yep. rape. Yes. And by the way, and you, you might be thinking to yourself, what happens if you get eviscerated and die in hell? Right? Because that's what happened to Roger just now. We should clarify that we're in pre-hell at this point. We're, we'll get to it. We'll explain later. But that will all sort of add up at the end. Right? Yeah. So they do that like very obvious allusion to an abortion. And then Jessica looks at her enormous like wall mural sized locket for a second. It's a flavor flame flavor flavor clock. Yes, it's, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's so big. And I was like, okay, that's going to be the sonogram of the kid? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the fetus. Or I guess it could be a very upsetting selfie with a fetus. <laughs> the day, I don't know. <laughs> So, okay, but we'll get back to that. And yes, we will get back to that. I just want to flag here. I called the movie here. I did a very you totally did. You simple did. It's bit of right math here in and your called notes. the movie. Yep. I mean, look, if we're, if we're pointing out where we called the movie, I called the movie in the very first scene. So yeah, just, right. we, we were all like, it's hell. I think we all knew it was hell. <laughs> yeah, no, but Heath has the math and everything right here in his notes. So, That's yeah, fair. I'll back him up. We'll come back to this at the end. Yeah. And listener, yes, you figured it out too. But, yeah, um, right. I didn't do anything genius on me. No, nope. <laughs> nope. So, okay. But just before she can detail all of her sins, a bloody new guy rushes into the scene yelling, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. And and they're like, well, fuck, we don't have room for a yet another character. So they just run off from this guy. <laughs> fuck this guy. And we never see him again. We totally don't. <laughs> So, yeah, and behind him, so they hear these steps coming behind him, right? And they're like, oh, well, you know, at, we know of like at least 11 people that are just wandering around here and are completely innocent. I better whack whoever this is with a pipe before I can identify them. And, of course, it's fucking Daniel. He walks through, he's like, he whacks with a pipe, and he's like, oh, shit, I almost murdered you. And he's like, oh, it's a good thing that you you should just behave differently when you hear people coming, right? Would we got to stop this whack first policy. It has never worked out for us as a group. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. You've been the victim of it. It's because my last name's Levine. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then there's this fucking weird ass stupid moment where you know you're dealing with a very amateur writer where all the characters start catching each other up on the shit that we, the audience, already <laughs> saw. It's so silly. This guy, Daniel's like, yeah, so I did some recon. Um, Chuck's a pedophile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Rachel ran away. Also, I did find a hallway of screams during <laughs> my recon. And they're like, like great work. We, we climbed through a garbage tunnel. There was a demon. Only Jessica saw it. We lost an deer. We didn't try very hard to find him afterwards. Uh, I feel like we're all caught up. <laughs> did you try going left at any time? Because it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. So they're like, well, we're going to go and check and see what those screams were. And Daniel's like, oh, well, you you go right to fuck ahead. Oh, I'm going to hang out of here. My character's kind of uh, flatlining. So I'll, yeah, uh, listen, I'll, I'll pop up. I'll, I'll go find that screaming guy from before. Maybe he and I'll have a movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then they have the dumbest, dumbest bad writing line where it was like, yeah, I guess you could stay here. And we all have free will. Or do we? Yeah, we do that. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Let's go find the Hall of Screams. So then they wander off from Daniel and they immediately find this just comically enormous pool of blood. <laughs> uh, it's a jacuzzi's yeah. worth of blood that they find. Hey, I found a Dexter room. I feel like we go in, right? <laughs> <laughs> we go we go the way the blood is pointing us, We should explore us, right? this. Otherwise, it's Hall of Screams, right? So, blood room? <laughs> Did someone drop their blood? <laughs> <laughs> And Jessica's dumbass is following behind him. She goes, where'd all this blood come from, Sam? Why would he? Louis, I cut myself shaving, Jessica. What, the yeah. <laughs> what is the wind condition in his head for checking out the blood room? Right. Like what, yes. Thank what's, you. <laughs> what's, what's the wind at the end of that? Oh, yeah. It's it's demon blood. So <laughs> scream hall. Guys, guys, it's otter pops and only half of them are ruined. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he finds this like creepy tunnel thing in this room where, uh, and he goes, he, 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 as he's looking at it, he turns to Jessica and he goes, I don't think it's an accident that we're here. And I'm like, was that anyone's working theory that Did this anyone was just an accident? Just all you, wandered you tripped here? and fell? Wait, wait. <laughs> My agent said I could eat crafty and there's a little bit of money. <laughs> were you all going on the I-9 and missed your exit? Because I'm thinking that's how maybe we all <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> 
Yeah, but then he notices her giant flavor locket and he goes, hey, who's that guy in your locket? Tell me a little more of your backstory. And she says, well, you know, that was my husband, but he's gone now. And Sam says, and I quote, what do you mean gone? <laughs> he's literally Omaha, disappeared. Like, it was so, so weird. It was like, poof. He said, poof. Yeah, but she says, no, I, he was killed by a, a drunk driver. And then at, at upon hearing that, Sam realizes with a whole renewed sense of urgency that they need to go. He says, we've got to leave now. And we all wrote in our notes, <laughs> yeah, man, that's the plot. <laughs> it's so funny. We need to leave the blood room is what just occurred to me now <laughs> after having like stuck my face into a dark area of the blood room. <laughs> it's so funny because it's literally this. He was killed by a drunk driver. Well, we should probably hit the dusty yes. trail. That's probably unrelated to anybody in the movie. <laughs> totally is. Changing the subject. <laughs> so then we check in on Nadir and he's walking to a different asterisk creep room. This is the same. We were in this room earlier and they're trying to act like we haven't, but it's really fucking funny. They didn't have as much abandoned hospital as they were expecting. But anyway, so he goes in there and he finds his dead daughter in there. So we go into his backstory, right? She's going to chastise him for accidentally killing her over dating a black man. Mm -hmm. She was dating a black man and he slapped her down movie stairs. And everyone knows when you fall down movie stairs, your neck instantly snaps. Unless you're the good guy. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, he smacks her when she's at the top of the stairs. She falls down. And then we're like, wow, that doesn't seem like that much of a sin. Really, it's more of an accident. And then we find out that he framed the black boyfriend for her murder. <laughs> Yeah, the cop showed up and he was just like, yeah, I think he slapped her down the stairs or something. <laughs> also, we have to talk about this. The actress uses the N-word. Boy, doesn't she? She's like, oh, you didn't want your daughter to date an N-world. And I was and I was like, this is not a woman of the right color to be using. No, nope, and I'm guessing not and a writer like of it either. Yeah. Hard R. Like a hard are. Well, what's amazing too is that this is the ghost or uh, like a demon impersonating his daughter and going like, you remember that time when you smacked me and everything went really, really bad? And then he smacks her in the middle of being chastised. Where you, you almost expect him to go, oh, so yeah, no, I see how this is a me thing now. That I got is a me it. thing. I, That's I, a me so, thing. Yeah. I smack I'm first sure. and ask questions later. That's on daddy. Yep. Yeah, but she says, you know, in order to make amends for this, you have to hang yourself now in pre-hell. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I get it. I guess that's just, that's, that's only fair. Also, also, I have a spider monkey demon with me who would like to watch. This is the first time we get a really good look at the spider demon monkey, right? This is the first time we get Heath's best worst. It's the greatest. Because first of all, they're trying to pretend they have two of these costumes. They don't, right? There are not, not two mm -mm. different demons no. in this room. There's just one demon and then the same demon with like a, a red blindfold instead of a blue one. There was a fight on the set about who got the bone wings <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so. So, yeah, so the demon, like, you know, just sort of lurches and fucking crab walks around. Again, it's on all fours the whole time going like, I'm a kitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cast of fucking cats are like, you look pretty silly right now. Demon, just so you know. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. Now do hermit crab. Okay. Okay. Well, it's it's the same. It's You're doing yeah, the same. No, this is really pretty much what I was doing. So yeah, but then he goes, all right, well, yeah, no, I'll go kill myself. I'm very sorry, daughter. Forgive me, God. And then just as he says that, the thing he was going to, the noose disappears and he just falls on the floor and there is no demon and there is no daughter and he's forgiven and it's okay that he framed an innocent man after murdering his daughter for dating a person of the wrong race. Yeah, I really wanted the spider monkey to be sitting there like, oh, um, well. I guess I'll fuck off then. <laughs> oh, yeah, we give, you, we, we give him one more shot. We try to trick him out of it, but yeah, you get one more shot for that. I yeah, wonder if Christine is still in the nap tunnel. If It's a good thing Roger didn't know. So, and, and elsewhere, of course, Sam, Jessica, and Celia, they come across another boarded window and, and Sam once again tries to, tries asterisk to pry the boards off with his bare hands. Yeah, I wrote, is this movie sponsored by Tony D's House of Boards for Windows? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I like the idea that hell is going to have boarded windows that are like 
kind of tough to open. Like that's going to be another right, but openable big problem from the deceiver. <laughs> So and, and so Jessica's like, hey, hold on a second. Why did you want to know so much about my backstory? What's your backstory? And he says, the dude in your locket, the, the your dead husband who died in the car accident was the guy I saw in the blue suit at the beginning of the movie that Eli forgot all about. <laughs> it was so insignificant. And she's like, fuck you. Super funny. That's literally her line. I laughed so hard. I, I don't know why you would yell that at me. I'm, I was just <laughs> naming a thing that's definitely true. It's, um, <laughs> we're stuck in a warehouse of metaphors. I feel like we just get all the information right. out and see what you we're going to saw out. a demon earlier. What are you like? Oh, well, this guy, what, what, was the supernatural is affecting us? Yes, obviously. Also, does that mean that dead husband was like, oh, my wife is trapped in a hell test in an abandoned hospital? No, I don't really have anything I want to communicate to her. But can the guy who hit me in his car, I just want to <laughs> I do, want to creep him out a little bit. I want to look like an airline stewardess who's out of his favorite snack boxes at the end of a hallway when he first arrives. Can I arrange that? Oh, it's my heaven. I can do what I want. Great. We'll put a pin in that one. There's also like one of the truly funniest moments I've ever seen in a fucking movie, right? Because he's trying to explain to her, he's like, look, we're obviously in pre-hell or something. There's some supernatural dimension. And just as he's saying that, a demonic arm reaches through the window that he's standing in front of the boarded window and grabs him. <laughs> yeah. He fights his way out and then he points to it and he says, and I quote, see? <laughs> it's the best. He's giving the speech that like we're probably locked in hell or purgatory. And she's like, what are you saying, though? And then right there, the demon attacks him. And he's like, I'm saying this right yeah, now. This, this is making yes. my point. Do you see this demon? <laughs> this, I'm right. Also about there, your husband, when you said, fuck you, I'm right about everything I said so far. And I love, so she, the demon's got him. So she grabs the pipe he's been carrying around and she just stabs it once and it dies. Like you, she stabs it with a pipe, not even a sharp object, and it just <laughs> dies. These are some damn fragile demons. Demons, they, they must be mad about the weird limitations on their movement and their like, yes. they, they've, they rolled a lot of bad D20s or something. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of crit fails. So yeah, so they wander off. Then we hear someone screaming for help. This is yet another new character. <laughs> being like come to the next scene it's this way i'm new you know you don't care who i am i'm just uh just for that yeah so the guy comes come, like screaming in and they're like we should hide from this guy fuck him right am i right let's fuck <laughs> whoever this person is this is teddy this is because every kickstarter back or over a hundred dollars got a speaking fucking line this is teddy he was a loan shark and now he's in hell being punished for that Hey, I feel like Lone Shark doesn't exactly fit with the rapist, pedophile, serial killer groups the, the, that we've got. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we've also got like did heroin and got an abortion here. <laughs> so it's he's middle of the road. Somewhere the on the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> Usury is. So I had that thought. And then the Satan character, by the way, Daniel Levine is Satan for sure. Yep. Get it? He walks in and reveals himself to be yeah. Satan. At he point. walks in, Dan reveals it, Levin. and he's like, <laughs> actually, so Daniel Levine anagrams to devil and Eli. <gasps> what? What? Oh, shit. Heath, turn around right now. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah. You're a podcaster. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Got him. But this is where Satan is like, yeah, by the way, I, I, I feel like I know what you're thinking. Greed, loan sharking, kind of like a borderline, like jaywalking type of sin. But yeah, you know, rules are rules. So you're all here. Yep. Yep. And and Teddy's like, okay, so let me ask you, like, where exactly in the line of how much interest I'm allowed to charge does it become a hell worthy trespass in your mind? And he's like, demons eat him. Demons eat him. But he speaks it. He says it in demon, right? He turns to the demon. He goes, chitter, chitter. Ah. <laughs> 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 I, re I hope that demon was really sassy back up. The demon was like, oh, kill him, kill him. Oh, good. I'm glad you told me in my language. Yeah. Otherwise, right. it wouldn't possibly understand what would happen next. <laughs> <laughs> Your accent sounds stupid, by the way. You sound like a fucking hick. You don't even know. You're like that guy that goes to the diner and he says, I'm Borghese because he thinks the, the waiter is <laughs> Spanish. Obviously, the, the waiter speaks English here. Come on. <laughs> so the gang, that's, uh, that's Sam, Jessica, and Celia. They run away from Satan. He kills Teddy. And they realize they need to hide Celia because having a little kid in your horror movie is terribly inconvenient. So Sam comes up with a great idea. He's like, hey, 
let's lower her down this laundry chute on a little rope and then hope we can find a way to get down to the laundry later. <laughs> let's paint a hole on this wall and then the road runner... <laughs> We'll run through it. Maybe Satan installed one shoot that's actually an exit. It could be this one. Right. Let's try it out. Yeah, because they know now that they're in a supernatural hell building. Why would they think? Yeah, right. They will, by the way, spend the rest of the movie stuffing this child into various containers for no reason. They will. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so they're going to lower her down into the laundry chute. Jessica kisses her, which seems weird. They just met, right? Yeah. And she starts to climb down, but just then... Satan starts coming, right? He's like right behind him. So they have to like sort of just wedge the rope on here and, and, and run and hide and hope the kid is fine. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if you've ever had a dog and then there's an emergency situation and you have to do that. Like, I'm just going to put your leash um, here. Don't do anything. Right, yeah, <laughs> right. They do that with a human who's mm -hmm. dangling, for all we know, like eight stories up in this abandoned hospital. Yeah, a right. silent bottle of height. Yes, all yes. Right, the floor is lava. Actually, it kind of is. That's pretty funny. The floor is lava. Don't move. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so they hide. Satan comes in and he goes like, oh, I wonder what this uh, rope leading to this fucking laundry chute is doing here. Come on, guys. This is so easy. So he just he Stupid. unties it and throws the rope it's, in there. It's so funny. He's like, come out or I'm killing this little girl. And they don't say anything. And he's like, okay, well, I wow. Satan am killing this little girl then. <laughs> and then he kills her. And I laughed for so long because they just don't do anything. <laughs> right. But we'll find out later that she's climbed to safety by this point. But for all we know at the moment, they're like, yeah, no, better her than us. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing we could do to help her. Sam's just like, well, this does make our lives easier in terms of the yeah. brain. She's Pretty you got to admit. See? Maybe if someone hadn't brought her along in the first place, we would have yeah, had to make this decision. <laughs> we I'm had an opportunity saying, Jessica. to just avoid this problem. So, yeah, so so Satan wanders off and, and, and Jessica freaks out. And Sam's like, hey, look, we barely even knew that. It was weird that you kissed her. We, we knew her for such a short period of time that it was weird when you kissed her. Right? Yeah, come on. Come on. Let's get over that. Now, I would think it'd be a bit of an insult to the very concept of division to pretend this movie distinguishes between a second and a third act. But we're going to take a break here anyway, right after I give act two B the hard sell. Will every single beat of this movie play out exactly as you expect it will in the third act? With so little mystery, how will I manage to come up with three entire questions here? <laughs> How about them Jaguars? Find out the answers okay. to some of these questions and I guess other stuff when we return for the generic conclusion of Kingdom Come. Duval. <laughs> Quick, this way. Jack, I'm so scared. There's no escape from me, little piggies. I can smell your souls. Who are you? I'm sorry, did you just say... Who are you? Yeah, what do you want from us? Are you guys being serious right now? I'm, I'm, I'm super obviously Satan. Oh, uh, Satan. That totally makes sense Yes. I, I, I have a literal demon with me with bone wings. Right. What the fuck did you think was happening? I don't know. Maybe you're like a serial killer. A, or A serial killer with... Telekinesis, who knows all of your sins. Maybe. I don't know. Nope. Not maybe. That's just not a thing. I, I'm just, I am super obviously the devil. Kia! Dude, what are you doing? I, I was hitting you with a bat. Cut! You thought a bat was going to work against Satan, the Prince of Darkness. I don't know. It might. It can't. No, unless you try. I, get I it. feel like. You can know. Okay, look, let, let me just lay it out for you. I'm Satan. You guys are sinners. And the only way to defeat me is through my ultimate enemy. A second bat. Yeah. No, no. It's through the God, It's through the power of God. Or is it a third bat? Yeah. There it is. Where the hell do you keep getting these bats? Facebook marketplace. Oh, okay. As is. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Chuck the pedophile. He's heard a noise and he wants to check and see if there's a jump scare on the other end of it. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. there is. He's got a shovel. Mm -hmm. Like he's going to beat up a demon. 
the shovel is going to dig a demon. Yeah. <laughs> Why is there a shovel there in this abandoned That's a great hospital? question. Oh, great question. In great the laundry. Question. Like a big outdoor mm-hmm. shovel. Not like a trowel. A sho- Either way, that's weird. Yep. I mean, you know it was up someone's ass at some point, right? That's the only reason. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, they, it's, it's a steam-powered hospital at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, in the, it was in the laundry. That's where it would wind up if it was extracted. So, yeah, no, that makes sense. So, yeah, so he walks up. But, but damn it, if it's not the little girl, Celia, she made it out of the tunnel and hid in a washing machine. But now she's with the pedophile character. Yeah. And look, I know Chuck's a pedophile, right? We've known that since we saw his glasses in Act One. But it's weird that he's like picking up girls now, right? It's just like, it's not the time. What the demons about. Yeah. Demons. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, okay. So meanwhile, Sam and Jess are fiercely running through halls in pursuit of her. They find a stairwell, but the door's locked. <laughs> yeah. And she yells, she's like, stairs, let's use the stairs. <laughs> I was like, cool. Yeah. Maybe they have a nice finished basement in this. <laughs> Hell place. <laughs> yeah, right. go check out, check out the downstairs. You're in hell. I don't think you should be going down. And yeah, right. If anything, right. go up. So, and he, he can't get the door open, so he says to her, and I quote, watch your eyes. <laughs> I'd love to see him demonstrate that one. And then he breaks the glass. And honestly, like, I was a little surprised that this movie had smash windows even in a derelict building levels of budget here. I, for I sure, for sure, yeah. We weren't supposed to do that. But Jess doesn't want to go down the stairs. She wants to wait and save Celia or tell Celia or send Celia. No, it's not clear what she wants. And the only reason I point that out is because Sam has to deliver the line, wait, Jess. And it is literally <laughs> the least enthusiastic <laughs> performance oh we have ever seen on a god awful movie, and someone once bought us a video of Kevin Sorbo admitting his entire worldview is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets mad at her too. She's going yes. off to find Celia, the little kid, and he's like, fucking women. He just says that to he himself. He says that. And I was like, you know, go, go ahead, Sam, finish your thought. Yes. Fucking women rescuing kids all the time always rescuing children that <laughs> i just dropped into a tunnel can't live so with them out. can't drop a child into a tunnel without them checking to see what happened to it yeah exactly so he follows her they go straight to the laundry room luckily they figure out where that was pretty quick she's gone but they find like the zippo that they'd given her so she'd have a source of light so they go in the direction the zippo points them mm-hmm. i guess <laughs> Like that's supposed to mean. I smell a pedophile this direction. Yeah, let's go this direction. Sure. Why not? So then we cut to Charles DePetto and he's with Celia and he's and he's hitting on her. It's a very un- uncomfortable moment there. He's like, Do you like me? And she's like, Oh, no, not at all. Oh, God. Jesus. Have you seen your glasses? You're obviously a pedophile. It's super funny. Look, I, I don't want to give these writers too much credit, but these writers don't know how pedophiles abuse children. So that's a pro. So he's just like, we could be friends. And she's like, no, thank you. And he's like, um, do you like lollipops? And she's like, no, I'm okay. And he's like, all right, well, I'm getting my dick out. I, I'm a pedophile in a movie. I don't really know <laughs> what the steps are. Yeah. Here comes Mr. Winky. Yeah. But just then Rachel shows up and brains him with the fucking shovel. Go Rachel. Okay. Now, I just want to pause for a second because Satan's going to show up in a second too. Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. seen a series of are you going to heaven or hell tests, right? Right. They have been, will you do drugs with your body? You were a murder rapist. You murdered your daughter. Keep in mind, that guy passed that one. Right, because he said he was sorry. Yeah. Also, loan shark with a high interest rate. Yeah, yep, he could have said he was sorry too. Yep. And Rachel's test will now be, will you kill the pedophile you just stopped from fucking a child right now. I yes. want to be clear. Not only is that not morally wrong, it's not even a crime. Yes. If you walk in on someone abusing a child and murder it's them. It's morally required. Right. They're like, hey, good job. Right. Nailed it. Here's your little pilot's wings. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And for and as far as we can tell, that's her only sin. Again, we're in pre-hell. Why is she here? We never established that she did any bad thing, right? She was just the victim of molestation. Her sin is failing to forgive her rapist. Right. And again, not even just failing to forgive him, but knowing that he is still a child abuser. Yep. That had she not walked in, he would have raped a child right then and there. 
Yes. Yes. And like Satan comes in and he's like trying to like convert her to you. Know, like she's, he's like, yes, give in to your anger. And there's this kind of like, will she or won't she moment. And she turns to Celia and she says, turn around and cover your ears. Cause will she? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Satan comes in and does a slow clap for yes. beating up the pedophile mid pedophilia. Like, am I supposed to not be agreeing with the literal prince of darkness? Like, the movie got very confused here. I thought it was just going to end. Well, I can see why a Christian movie would not want you to be super mad at pedophiles and hold a big grudge about it. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. It does make sense. Yeah. So, but, but just then, so Satan's like, yeah, go ahead, kill him with the shovel. It'll be great. Like you can whack his whole fucking head off. And just then Sam runs and he throws a halo on his head and he jumps on Rachel's other shoulder. And we have the most literal moment of psychomachia we have ever seen in God awful movies, right? Where the literal devil is standing because she's down in a depression, right? So Satan is pretty much up on one shoulder and Sam is up on the other. <laughs> right. So to be clear, Satan, the Prince of Darkness, kill the pedophile protagonist of the movie. Yes. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yep. Also, Sam has no arguments, right? The argument Sam should be making is, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's two spider monkey demons in the room. This is a test. Yes. So <laughs> it's very clearly saying don't kill Try the pedophile. Just don't do the thing that the guy with the spider monkey demons is suggesting that you do. Because <laughs> it's a spider monkey demon test. We can talk. We can all go get coffee and talk about the recidivism <laughs> rate among pederasts and <laughs> maybe all agree together. We can get j Dog down here and we can all agree together. It's better for you to brain him with a shovel. But right now, this is a pop quiz. No, but <laughs> instead... Sam doesn't do any of that, any of that explaining. He's just like, don't kill the pedophile because <laughs> I am going to go for a sweet sneak attack called run across the room from really far and try to do like a flying kick of the devil. What was he thinking that was going right? Because what he's doing is he's setting Satan up to do a force push. Right, but what right. did he imagine was going to happen there? He just knocks Satan out. Wow, Okay. Um, <laughs> it was flying kick, everybody. All right, so just Satan so has kind of a glass jaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we kick Satan while he's unconscious? Uh, and and then Rachel's about to not do it, and then Satan goes, "If you don't kill him, it means that you are into the molestation and that you liked it." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm so glad we don't have a guest for this episode." <laughs> oh my. God. Me too. Oh, I got to tell you, originally I had scheduled this for a Kara week, and I was like, "Nice, nice, good week, good switcheroo." <laughs> it's good that we didn't do good that. switcheroo. <laughs> I mean, she's also in the movie, so she probably signed something that she couldn't be in. It was, oh, yeah, know. right. No, that's probably, yeah. So, and I love this moment too, because then Rachel beans him to death with the shovel, right? Kills the guy. And Satan's like, ah, I get to take your soul. Celia turns to both of them and say, well, that's about it for her. Let's get the fuck out of here, huh? What do you say? You guys, you guys want to go? <laughs> You'd think Celia would be a little bit more invested in the safety and well-being of someone who had just saved her from a pedophile, but she's like, right. ah, no, she's like, yeah, can't win them all. Yeah. You know, she she cast her lot. It's how I act when someone shitty quits podcasting. Yeah. Right? Like, everyone's like, oh, did you see the Facebook post? And I'm like, what? Oh. Oh, so, so sad. It's a good time to move on, though. Yeah. <laughs> so then we, we follow Sam, Jess, and Celia through more breathless and aimless running through hallways and shit. They stop into another room and he's like, I need to find, I lost my pipe. I need a new signature weapon. And they're like, why? Did you think the pipe was going to do the trick against Satan and his literal fucking demonic minions? You just got force pushed the moment you tried to do a yeah, fly. I you, you hadn't Look, even done your run across the room. And he was like, I'm Satan. What are you doing? Look, Jess, you killed a demon earlier with a pipe. There's no reason to believe that I can't just get Satan when he's not looking. <laughs> That's true. Yep. No, we, we have no idea what the rules are. We just know they're not consistent. Yeah. So, but Satan's following behind him, giving him the stupid fucking Satan monologue that this writer came up with. Just once can Satan not do a, oh, how I hate the humans monologue. Or could it at least not have a literal in it? I mean, yep. give me a fucking break. Also, maybe don't have Satan go by smell, most importantly, over any yeah. of the other magic he right? has. Right, a lot of smelling. A lot of smelling. Or maybe you instruct your actor not to do the same voice I would do if I was making fun of Shakespearean actors. Yep. Oh, it's so over the top and stupid. So, yeah, so Satan sniffs his way to him. They're all hiding behind this wall. 
And he realizes that they're there and he's like shit talking them and shit talking God. And Sam is holding up a wrench ready to smack him with a very small wrench at a moment's notice. <laughs> but then Satan reaches through the fucking drywall, Chris Cooley style and grabs Jess. <laughs> yeah. And that was just for you. It's such a good commercial. Just for you. I can't imagine anybody else knows what the fuck I'm talking about. Pick but yeah, no, he punches through the wall to, to grab Sam. And then you, his hand gets knocked off and he's like, okay, should have just walked around the corner. It's right. Yeah. It's All just right. right. I'm Satan. nine second timeout. Yeah, no, fucking Sam whacks him and then knuckles with his wrench like a nun with a ruler. And Satan's like, oh, no, I have been defeated temporarily. <laughs> and you can escape now. <laughs> so they run back to the stairwell again, going further down because they think that's where the exit from hell is. Mm -hmm. And Sam's like, hey, we should hide Celia again. And Jessica's like, why? This, that did not work out well for us last time. He's like, well, she wasn't there. So it worked out in that sense. Come on, it'll be fine. <laughs> Celia's like, seriously? Seriously? He says, and again, here's a, this is a direct quote. He says, if we separate, we can lose him and make our way back to her. And I'm like, but then you would just be where you are now. What is the logic here, Sam? <laughs> You're going to get Satan lost within his own hell area right, and yes. then double back? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but Jess reluctantly agrees that they can hide Celia in a cupboard and, and she even says, she's like, hey, try not to get carted off by another fucking pedophile this time, huh? Because it's, it's on you this time, you know? Stranger danger, Celia. Come yeah, on. Yeah. So they start to walk away. Satan sees him right away. They run away, but that doesn't work because he's Satan, the prince of fucking darkness, right? So he's just suddenly in front of them. They turn around. They start running back like, oh, maybe this time it'll work. And he telekinetically knocks them over. He might as well say, guys, I'm fucking... Satan, the Prince of Darkness. Mm -hmm. He does another force pull this time, not a push. Yes. And they, yep. they like hold off the magical force pull from Satan. And I was like, okay, so he has that, but it's like medium. It's medium. It's like yeah. kind of weak. It's, it's strong on the push, like, <laughs> like weak on the pull. Uh, clearly, yeah. And not just that. She makes it into the chapel, which is safe. Yeah. Why would he have, why would he put them in a building with the safe? Satan's like, ah, I rented a building with a God room again. Fuck, this keeps <laughs> Doesn't happening. make any sense. Also, he can teleport. He can run real fast. Why is he using the telekinesis right now? Why is he using something that can be so easily thwarted? It makes no fucking sense. Anyway. So yeah, so Jess climbs into the, the chapel. Sam doesn't make it though. So he gets Sam. And Satan's like, okay, I can't go into the chapel, but I'm going to torture Sam right in front of you if you don't come out. I wanted her to be like, okay. I mean, I yeah. just met this guy. He's the worst yeah, he, so far. Yeah, right. It's kind, so, of, kind of a... Do your thing. Here's what I know about him. He wants to abandon a child so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Like it's his thing. Yeah. He couldn't come up for an, uh, of an argument of not killing a pedophile in front of Satan and his spider monkeys. He's not a team player. Yeah. <laughs> also, he just whacks everybody who comes around the corner with pipes. I don't know if you noticed that. It was you. You know, he was doing it to you. So, yeah, but she's going to rescue him. So she goes to leave the chapel, but just then she notices a little tiny crucifix hidden in the rubble. Oh. Yeah. I guess you have to find a cross that was like manufactured as a cross. You can't just like make a T-shape out of two things. Yeah. Well, no. I don't know because she doesn't even really try. Once you find out that crosses is, uh, are his weakness, you would think you'd make a bunch of little crosses, but no. Fingers? Like, can't you do the finger cross? I don't know. The, the rules are weird. Yeah. So she, she comes out, she's got her little cross, he speed runs up to her, he grabs her by the throat, and she says, who are you? Come on. Who am Legitimately, I? Legitimately, that's what she said. Come on. I'm Tim Tebow. Who the fuck do you think I am? <laughs> she says, fuck you. And he says, oh, you'd love that, wouldn't you? If I fucked you, you could have another sinful up. Abortion, which is Got your her. evil sin that we're just now to think that we're revealing to the audience. <laughs> you had an abortion. Fucking got her. That's why you're in hell. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he opens his mouth all Satanfully and she stabs him in the eye with a crucifix. And I'm thinking to myself, you could have, if it was, if you're going to stab him in the eye, you could have just picked up any damn thing. I don't yeah. think it had to be a cross. No, but because it's a cross, it works. Like it doesn't heal. 
Yeah, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Satan, Prince of Darkness is just missing an eye now. He's got an forever. eye <laughs> Doing a Nick Fury thing. And then Satan's like, it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. Stupid. I don't know why I tried to do like a banter <laughs> It just sounded good in my head. timey phrase there. But yeah, so, but then suddenly the demons all come running around and surround him. And Satan's like, oh, so like speaking of reveals that everyone already figured out, have you told... Jessica yet, Sam, that you're the drunk driver that killed her husband? And he's going for the kill the pedophile that raped you as a child stakes, but absolutely no one is feeling those stakes except for Satan. Right. Like, she's like, oh, you killed my husband. Um, That sucks, man. I'm upset with you. And she, and then he's like, wouldn't you like to kill him with this rusty end of a paper cutter that I have now? And she's no. like, maybe, I don't know. Let me, let me hold it. Let me, let me get a feel of it. <laughs> <laughs> let me say, I've been hit by a drunk driver and it sucked. And I certainly don't like wish well for that person. But if someone appeared and was like, want to behead them? I'd be like, no, no, no. it'd be a pretty easy fucking answer to <laughs> I want them to like <laughs> get into a secular recovery program. Is that an option? Can I be like, you have to go to secular recovery. <laughs> Am I allowed to do that? (laughs) So yeah, anyway, so Satan gives her the machete. She's like, she raises it up above her head. Like she's actually going to do it. And then he's like, yeah, man, I'm super sorry. And she's like, I forgive you. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. She climactically says to Satan, I forgive him. (laughs) Is the delivery. The spider monkeys, by the way, we have the best talking about this. Yeah. The spider monkeys are bored as shit. <laughs> yes. The spider monkeys might as well be sitting there smoking at this point doing that because <laughs> they're in like a pool then they might as well like be kicking their legs and like right, rah, yeah. rah, rah, let us know. <laughs> if you need the assistance of a spider monkey demon at any point. Yeah. So, so but then she turns and she whacks Satan in the neck with the machete which also works. Apparently it's a consecrated paper cutter Edge. Well, just short term, just short term. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, you're right. It all adds up in that the That eye is gone forever. <laughs> Satan is like Daffy Duck for this whole movie getting tricked. <laughs> oh, it's funny. It's the best. <laughs> well, especially in this moment, right? Because he's like, ah, you know, that's not uh, a crucifix, so it won't work. I'm going to kill you just like you killed your unborn child. And just then Celia comes in holding her hand up like fucking 11 or something. She's like, oh, hell no, motherfucker. And throws him against the wall with her force powers. I wanted a kung fu fight so fucking (laughs) bad. (laughs) Look, I know none of these actors are busy working. We put you in training for three to 10 years and we just have a super good kung fu fight of Satan versus this little girl. This is my favorite fucking movie. Oh, and <laughs> right? so- just get that like boo, boo, techno going. So Fuck, don't, yeah. don't, 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 okay, yeah, don't, some don't. neon lights, John Wick style. Yeah. <laughs> Nunchucks? Come on. So this little girl's an angel, right? That's what they're going for, basically. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's dumber than that, but sure, for it now. Yes, but yeah. To be clear, that means an angel. An angel showed up at this weird Satan purgatory warehouse thing and played along with Satan's little skit yes! the whole time instead of just telling him the answer, what what was happening. Could have saved everybody. Could have just been like, okay, so you're not going to believe me at first, but then a demon is going to grab somebody and it's going to all make sense. Yeah. No, but she's throwing him around with the force. And he says, and the movie is just so poorly done that it's just, you know, you're, you're, there's no suspension of disbelief. So it's really just a grown man screaming at a seven-year-old, fuck you and your God, you little cunt. Like, that's yeah. just uncomfortable. Thanksgiving, right? Every atheist <laughs> comes to Thanksgiving. And your grandma, your grandma who's Christian is like, pass the potatoes. And you're like, fuck you and your God, you little cunt. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's, What's great is that everyone in the room does that. Like, I don't think you say the C word anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, no, the British say, and it's like, yeah, we're not British. Yeah, no, right? you're not. Come it's on. Like, well, I was kind of it going feels for bad. British earlier in my accent. Mm, I don't know you didn't <laughs> so, hit it though. Yeah, but so she uses her light eyes, and suddenly a bunch of demonic hands yank Satan through the wall, uh, presumably to hell, which is where he keeps his stuff. I mean, it's not a big deal 
Why go to my room? I think he's fine. Okay, the through the wall thing is a little too much now. Everybody could just be walking around into the room and do stuff in the room where the things are happening, but they keep going for the wall smash. That it felt like a sex thing for the movie makers to me at this point. <laughs> oh, maybe <laughs> like a glory hole fetish scenario. Okay, all right, all right. My favorite part of this scene is that after Satan gets sucked away, Celia does like a chest check at the spider monkeys. She's like, "You want a piece of this?" And they're like, "Hey, we just work here." Okay. Yeah, right. No, we were actually just smoking. We were looking Don't make for this weird. I'm on my 15. Can you take off my blindfold? Hey, so, <laughs> hey, Celia, take off my blindfold and I'll tell you where we nap. <laughs> so with the day saved, Celia goes over to comfort Jess and Sam. And Jess is like, hey, there was a bit in there earlier where Satan said there's no redemption for a sinner like me. What was what was that? He was just talking <laughs> shit, right? That was not a... I don't listen to him. That is sad. Uh, Stupid. <laughs> oh, he's the literal devil. Uh, he lies, really? You're you're not yeah. with the, the concept yet? Okay. And then we get this movie's best worst reveal, right? Which, as I said, I'm sure the listener has, has already figured out that Celia, the angel kid, is the daughter that Jessica aborted when she was 18. And she forgives her. She says, I forgive you, mommy. I mommy. laughed so goddamn so hard. hard. It so was fucking hard. So <laughs> I laughed a lot. The air marshal had a gun to my temple. The entire <laughs> he was just like, nope. So Eli's just laughing. Milk is pouring into his cereal bowl that he has yep. somehow on the plane. <laughs> she says, the important thing that you is that you always loved me. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, the important thing is that she killed you, right? Right. She could, the, the, uh, Jessica even says, how in the world could you forgive me? And she says, because you felt terrible about getting an abortion for your entire life and you guilted yourself and you never got over it and you let it psychologically scar you so much that I forgive you. And she's like, oh, okay. <sighs> now, and also, I have the impression that the actor playing Jessica is not down with this shit because her, she has the emotional level of fucking Buster Keaton on her face through this entire <laughs> exchange, right? There's yeah. this moment of like, I can't believe it's come to this on her fucking face as she's saying these lines. She's literally texting her agent, okay, I'll do softcore porn while she's delivering the lines. <laughs> she's like, you know, mommy always regretted. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, no, I yeah. said softcore. <laughs> Soft. And then, so then she, the little girl turns to Sam and she says, one, seven, two, she's waiting. Come on, just say the answer. I wanted Sam to be like, sorry, what? Will you yeah, just, just say the whole idea? Why are you doing your vague helping riddle? Thing. So stupid. Also, just, just to be clear here, if you have an abortion, this is the accidental moral of the story by this dumb yes. movie. Mm -hmm. This is the moral. If you have an abortion, you'll get magically saved by the angel of the dead fetus if you have any hell problems. You should try to have at least have one an abortion. Abortion, yeah. And you get an angel fetus who can beat up Satan and help you out. Yes, right. You should have had two or three. If she'd had two or three abortions, this movie would have been easy. They probably could have saved, uh, you know, Rachel and everybody <laughs> too. Rob Lowe charging the gates of hell with his armies of aborted babies. <laughs> no. Yeah. And if anything, you want to have, have a big abortion, like late as possible, so they're bigger. To fight, yeah, right. Is, yeah, that's right. that's a good get thing a to do. Head start. Get get a little uh, the grudge going. Drown drown one big kid in a bathtub, you know, oh, just so you can have someone Christ. who's got like a little oomph behind the uppercut. Really late. Woo! Kill your daughter like Carly Fiorina did. Right? That was an adult. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fourth trimester. So then we get this car crash transition graphic that would have been too cheesy for the Super Friends. What the hell was going on here? Oh, this was the buddy who just learned CGI being like, I want to use my glass based stuff again. Yeah. And they're like, all right, all right. Clearly. So we see Sam waking up. Now he's in a car accident. This is not the car accident from before. It's a different one, different car accident. The entire, this character's entire being is built around this car accident that he was in. This is a different car accident. He is now in like a 72 car pileup that includes all of the other characters they kept fighting. So he got sent back in time or like Satan called a, a timeout, like a Zach Morris timeout. Yes. A timeout. Yes. Out, right at the moment of crashing and everybody else's things. Satan was hanging out. There was a 97 car pileup and he was like, okay, you know what? 
there's actually quite a few damned people in this. I wonder if I could get a little spook a runaround going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what the movie's fucking premise is. Yes. So Sam's just running through. He sees like half a dead guy in the street. It's Charles the pedophile. He sees a dead lady hanging out the window. It's Victoria, right? Roger's there. He's dead. He runs by uh, Nadir. Nadir made it because he to apologize to God for killing his daughter and framing a black man for it. Right. But as he's running around, he's yelling for Jessica. He sees mile marker one seven two, just like the kid said. Yeah. And if he didn't see that, he would have stopped looking. So it's really a good thing she told him. About I really want him to not notice that. And then like the little girl has to be like, oh my God, idiot oh, right there. Shit. I don't My know. old ones. <laughs> well, but also like I, I, I expected that something would come of this, right? But she's just off the road. It's not like she's like way far off the road where nobody would have seen her. She's just off the fucking road. And the paramedics are the ones that come like immediately after he goes down there. And they're like, hey, we also noticed her move away from her. We will save her life while you stand there screaming. No, no. I have to hold her hand. <laughs> her dead baby told me I have to hold her hand. Yeah, right, right. He insists on holding her hand through it. And then she, but she's miracled back to life. She comes back to life and and is forgiven for her abortion now. Okay, just to recap, the pedophile, the serial rapist, they're dead. Yes. But Nadir is still alive after killing his daughter for dating a black guy and f doing a frame up. Yes. That like that's a that's a nuanced line in the sand that this movie is trying to draw. Yeah, it's a weird compass. Well, especially because Rachel is is in hell now, not not only dead but in hell for eternity now because she killed the guy who was already dead. There's only like he was cut in half in the accident, right? So she killed the dead guy in Satan's imagination dream and died and went to hell for it. That's a really weird fucking line. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is a weird <laughs> argument that happened in real life with the movie maker who was like, I will make this point. Like this was adjudicated by the movie against somebody he had an insane argument with, I guess. I guess. Okay. So so now we get Sam and uh, and Jess, they're being loaded into side-by-side -side ambulances, like an, like an ad for overdosing on Cialis or something. Yeah. <laughs> but it turns out that Satan is driving the ambulance. The movie might as well end with, or is it? Yeah, right. Sam's like, no, that doesn't make any sense. What are we yeah. even saying now? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I wanted Satan to just drive to the hospital normal and then be like, okay, didn't didn't really work out my next plan yet. Sorry, I'm, I'm, just I'm missing a hand now. <laughs> and an eye. No, an eye. Just an eye. My hand grew back. I guess <laughs> yeah, I'll no, go that into the yeah. hospital too. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> see if they at least have an eye patch for me. All right, well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of Kingdom Come, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lube ourselves up for next week. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Well, Noah, we've been waiting long, long time for this one, and I'm glad we did because we'll be watching whatever that movie's called in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, Sound, Sound, of, of, Sound freedom. of Freedom? That's Sound it, of Freedom, yeah. live in Las Vegas. Awesome. Cannot wait. So with that to look forward to, we're going to make episode 437 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D &D Minus, The Skeptic Rad, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, Movie Blue Traps on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audience, Jerry Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm with no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Glows. Bone Wing Demon just sat in the passenger seat of that ambulance and played with a fidget spinner. <laughs> Nadir went on to go to heaven while the daughter he murdered for dating a black guy probably went to hell. Is, is their theology. Moral of the story. Satan is still just missing an eye now. I guess. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> fucked up his ping pong game. Satan goes to the hospital. Wow, the medical system here is fucked up. I'm literally the demon of the universe. <laughs> wow. I 
I'd have to pay for this? I have to pay for my own ambulance? I drove the amp. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> you should at least get it. What do you under, What do you mean a copay is different than a deductible? <laughs> Bonewing, are you paying attention to this? <laughs> so I'm not insured? Well, you should be. You should be. Not for a while. I'm not insured for a while? What? What? Put your switch down. <laughs> no, you don't have to finish the day on Stardew. You can just press the home button and it pauses it. <laughs> it yes, it does. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. CareSource gives you so much more than health insurance. Over 1 million Ohio Medicaid members can't be wrong. So choose the plan Ohioans trust. CareSource. It's your Medicaid. It's your choice. Enroll now at CareSource.com. When you save on auto insurance for driving safe with USAA SafePilot, you'll feel like a big deal. Even in a traffic jam. Save up to 30% with USAA SafePilot. Restrictions apply. 